All right, let's turn our Bible to this book of Psalms. We're going to study a new chapter today, Psalm 92. Psalms 92. Psalm 92 has 15 verses and we're going to study verse by verse and we're going to see how the Lord will help us in this chapter and how can we get more closer to the Lord and enrich our spiritual life, growing in the love of God, in the knowledge of God, in the worship of God, in the house of God in the work of God, with the people of God, and triumph in God. So we are going to see this chapter today. And we're going to ask God to help us. Psalms, Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Maybe we can all stand to honor God's word, isn't it? And we'll read all of that 15 verses. All of that 15 verses. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. And to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, neither does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eye also shall see my desire on my enemies, and my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. It shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in an old age. They shall be fat and flourish, flourishing. To show that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. Amen. Father, help us today to understand your word better. Help us to learn your ways well. Oh God, that our heart will become more closer to you. That you would be so dear to us in our words and actions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. When we study this chapter... We, will, we are seeing the good thing of our lives. Good things of lives.
There are many good things that God wants us to do. And there are many good things that God wants to bless us with. Good things of lives. Nobody here wants anything bad. Everybody wants good things. Am I right? And our heart's desire also is that we do good things for God and for God's people and for people around us. But we also want God to do good things in our life. God is teaching some wonderful truths to us how to flourish in life. How to be prosperous. These are biblical truths. How to be flourishing and how to be how to be fruitful as our days and years go by. I think if we will just take Bible truths on its face value, just as it says, without debating it, without arguing with it, without trying to put your own opinions into it and say, okay, okay God, because your word says, I'm going to do it. And I think if we would come like a, with a childlike faith in such a manner, we will able to see great things happening in our life. Because what br will bring a total blessing in our life is humility and faith. Humility and faith. We just need to be humble and accept God's word. And we need to have faith that what God's word says will be accomplished in our life. It is sad that many a times as we as Christians... We try to reason in our mind when God's word says something and we say, I don't think that's possible. Those were written for those people. And I don't think that it is possible now. And we try to reason. And, uh, and because of those kind of doubts, you know, the Bible says anything without faith is what? Anything that is of not faith is sin. Even if you eat, Without faith, it is sin. Even worshipping without faith. And that's why when we come, we need to know that God is in our midst. God is in our presence. We are worshipping God. Even praying, many times we pray wondering whether God will answer or not. And, and thank God that He is still merciful, even in our folly, he still answers even when we doubt. We need to just believe. Just believe. Look at verse number one. I like to call this message as the good things of life. The good things of life. Flourishing and fruitfulling are bringing forth fruit in our life. How to flourish and be fruitful in life. The Bible says it is a good thing. Everybody say good thing. <laughs> it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Gratitude is the greatest virtue of a human being. Gratitude. Some people have tough time in saying thank you because of pride. We don't want to say thank you. We think that if we say thank you that we would become something little. No, it is a good thing to give thanks. We should be grateful people, people of gratitude. Gratitude to our family, for our friends, towards our neighbors. But above all, we should be grat grateful to God for everything. So why do we come to God's house? Why do we come to church? To say thank you. 
to worship, to say thank you, to encourage, to edify the believers, to give God the glory and honor and praise, to become a lighthouse to the world. I'm sure every evening when we walk as a group to this place, there are a lot of people thinking and questioning, who are these people with Bible in their hands? And we are sowing seeds in the minds of all these onlookers. And someday, they're going to be like, I need to go there and see what's happening. Yesterday after my workout, I was just sitting and there was one scientist who came and sat next to me. He began to look at me in the morning. He says, uh, are you a pastor? I said, yes. He said, I see you every day with that t-shirt. When I go to work out, I always wear my Grace and Truth Baptist Church t-shirt because I want people to see it. When I go out with my family, we are always wearing those t-shirts. So when six of us are walking in, half a football team, the whole restaurant looks at us. Are they all yours? <laughs> the bus stand sees us. Wherever we walk with that t-shirt, everybody turns to see the red t-shirt and they are reading Grace and Truth Baptist Church. And so this man um, saw me and he said, are you, are, you a, are you a pastor? I said, yeah. He says, every day I see your t-shirt. And, and then he asked her, oh, so where do, you, where do you fellowship? And I told him where I fellowship and he said he's a scientist and he's in, in, in the NIO and we got to meet. Two weeks back, I, we as a family, we went to eat some, uh, eat lunch and one young man came and, and he looked at us and says, are you Baptist? Because he saw our t-shirt and I said, yes. And I asked, are you a Baptist? He said, yes. And I said, so where are you from? He said, I'm from Nagaland. And we're able to meet and become friends to that young man. And so when we come in this place, we are coming as a testimony to the onlookers. They are watching us every week, coming as a group, dressed up for the Lord, with a Bible in our hands. They are watching and we are sowing curiosity in their mind. We are sowing thoughts in their mind. And someday, that will bear fruits. And so we come here to be a testimony. And it is a good thing. We are coming here for te te thanking God. We are coming here for a testimony. We are coming here to edify and encourage our believers we are coming here to get charged up. Nabal, we are coming here to give thanks unto the Lord and sing praises to his holy name. Look, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. That's why we should be grateful to God. When God answers your prayers, it is a good thing to give thanks to God. Testify it openly. Tell the whole world. Tell the whole world what God has done in your life. Tell the church what God has done. Give thanks to God in private and in public. Secondly, how do we show our joy? We sing. We sing unto the Lord because he has put joy in our heart. The joy of the Lord is my, what? Strength. It is a good thing, dear friends, to give thanks. First and foremost, what God wants to say. Are you thankful to the Lord for what God has blessed you with? If I'm not thankful for what I have right now, how can God even trust me with what I don't have and what I need? Does that make sense? Are you thankful that you have good health? Do you thank God for that every day? Are you thankful that you, when you eat food, you have taste in your mouth? We take that for granted. 
Are you thankful for breathing in and breathing out? Are you thankful for good health, for family, for job, for business? Are we thankful to the Lord every day? If we are grateful and thankful to the Lord every day, if we show gratitude to, what, to God for what we have, God will suddenly give us what we need. God will suddenly give us what we need. It is a good thing. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. So, give th thanks to God and sing his praises. Sing praises. Look at the second thing in verse number two. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. It is a good thing to boast about God. It is a good thing to boast about God. Hey brother, how are you doing? I'm fine. That's good. But how about saying, God has been so good to me. Look, when you start answering people biblically and stop being how normally you would answer, everything will change. The way people will respond will change. The, pe the way people will talk to you will change. Hey, how are you, sister? Oh, God has been so good to me this week. I am doing fantastic. God has been so good to me. If we would respond to even unbelievers in that manner, they'll start asking about your God. Who is that God that you're talking about that has been so good to you? I think we should change the way that we answer people. How are you? Oh, God has been so good to me. I'm better than I deserve. Right? Am I right? Better than we deserve. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every, ma every night. Boast about God. First thing, give thanks and sing praises. Secondly, boast about God, both morning and evening, which means throughout the day. Boast about God. There's nothing that you will have no reason of boasting, Ezekiel. Just sit right there, okay? There's nothing that, there's no, there's, you will never go off from reasons to boast about God. Paul talks about that he will glory and boast about God. He says, if I boast, may I boast about God. And we should be boasting about God to unbelievers. And I, I think if we all will start boasting about God to our families who are unbelievers, our friends who are unbelievers or strangers who are unbelievers who talk to us daily and if we would boast about God, we will have more opportunity of sharing the gospel to them. They would really want to know, who is your God that is so good to you? Ah, oh, his name is Jesus. He just loves me. He answers my prayer. And I was talking, I've been in touch with these Jehovah's Witnesses. And about for one month, they've been out and they came back and they got in touch with me again. And they asked me, how are you doing? And I said, oh, my friend, God has been answering my prayer this week. I had a great time in church worshipping the Lord and the message was great. And after that, there was no message at all from them. <laughs> Finished. Because in Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't know what worship means. All they know is their Bible studies from their magazines. They don't know what worship means. They don't know what answers to their prayer means. They don't understand those things because they don't have a relationship with God, with Jesus. 
It's all about they have to do everything for God. Work, 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 knock, knock, knock at the doors of the neighbors. That's all they think about. But when you talk about how God has been good to you, I mean, you don't need a gospel track sometimes if you don't have. And if, a neighbor, if somebody asks you, how are you doing? God has been so good to me. I've been enjoying God's blessing this week. It will totally change the way you have a conversation with everybody. Boast about God. And if need be, use music. You don't need music actually. Music just accompanies, instrument just accompanies worship. You don't need it. But it helps us. Isn't it? It helps us. And so it's okay to use, listen to music. Listen to good music when you're driving. Listen to good music when you're in your bed. Listen to your good music on your phone. When you're working. When you're quiet. When you're alone. Listen to songs praising God. Look at that verse 3. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. It is a good thing. It is a good thing to give thanks and sing praises. It is a good thing to boast about God. And it is a good thing to use music for your soul. When Saul was distressed and, and, and he was controlled by this evil spirit, David came with his harp and he played his harp. And what happened? How did he play his harp? Those rock music? Electric band? No. Solemn sound. Amazing. Sing grace, how sweet the sound. Or how about going to amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the rights like me. Yo, yo. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's not solemn sound. <laughs> Music is used. To be pleasant to the eyes and to the heart in worshipping God. Solemn sound. People think, ah, if I use if I use rock band, I can attract the youth. Yeah, you're attracting the youth with those music, and for that music, they're lingering now. Then then they go to the world for that kind of music. And Christians should not be using such kind of musics. We got to be careful with what music what, that we listen to. Just because they put God's word into it doesn't make it godly music. In a bottle of poison, if you put a dro few drops of milk, it does not make it milk, it's a poison. We are supposed to use biblical music upon an instrument of ten strings. Upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. Sometimes when I go and I'm sitting somewhere, maybe in a restaurant, and I don't like the music, I try to request them to just, if they can put the sound less. It affects us, affects the spirit. We don't want to be disturbed. We want solemn sound in worshipping God, in encouraging our spiritual life, in uplifting our Attitude of worship. Give thanks to God. It is a good thing to give thanks to God and sing praise. It is a good thing to boast about God. It is a good thing to use music to encourage our soul. David played music. And what happened to the evil spirit? Went away from Saul. Right? Look at verse number 4. For thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hand. You know what you and I should be doing? We should always try, strive. We should always strive to 
triumph for God. I should always try to do something better today than yesterday. I'm triumphing for God. Triumph means what? Being victorious, becoming champions, more than conquerors, the Bible says. More than conquerors, which means yesterday you conquered something, you become better than that yet, better than yesterday now. More than conquerors. Strive to triumph for God. Try, strive to be a champion for God. Do something better than yesterday. Be something doing it better than last week. Striving. And in fact, that is taught everywhere. You go to the gym, just teaching you to triumph, to strive. You go to work, the boss wants you to do better. You want to be in the business, you want to be better in business. Do better than previous. You have children, you want your children to triumph in their life, in behaviors, obedience, in their lifestyle. You want to triumph in the way you look. You want to triumph in the way you wear. And God wants us to triumph. God wants us to triumph, right? And so it is a good thing to triumph. Look at what he says, For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. God has done great things in our life. Now because of that, I'm going to triumph for God. I'm going to be a better Christian than yesterday. I'm going to give more track, this, uh, tracks to the people than last week. I'm going to give invitations. I'm going to send more messages of the gospel. I'm going to put more of scriptures and more of, more of the Lord on my social networks. I'm going to triumph in my ways for God. I'm going to encourage the world with what God has done. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. Look at verse number five. I don't know. I get dried up in this place. I don't get dried up anywhere but here. O oh Lord. <clears throat> o oh Lord. Verse number five. How great are thy words and thy thoughts are very deep. God's thoughts are very deep. Get to know God daily, deeply. Don't be satisfied with just, you know, I will not be able to, uh, I will not be able to preach to you if I don't think deeply upon the scripture that the Lord has laid in my heart. I have to sit and study and think about and reason in my mind and, and ask questions from that particular scripture in that particular verse and bring out the truths so I can serve spiritual bread for you so you don't starve in the church. We all have to think deeply. Get to know God daily, deeply. Get to know God daily, deeply. Okay, let's all say, it, it, say after me. It is a good thing to give thanks and to sing praise. It is a good thing to boast about God. It is a good thing to play music for our soul. It is a good thing to triumph for God. It is a good thing to get to know God daily, deeply. Daily we should get to know God. His blessings are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. In fact, I was, we were talking yesterday at the Preacher Boys class. When we go to heaven, there's no night and day, isn't it? He's going to be the light. So when the Bible, when we talk about His blessings are new every morning, it's always morning over there. It's a beautiful day over there. 
every time we see God in heaven, we're going to see his new glory over in newness and newness and newness. And it will never fade for billions and billions of years while we see God's face. And the only way for you and for me to know, to get to know God deeply is by hearing God's word and reading God's word and studying God's word. We should read our Bible every day. We should hear the preaching of God's word. And we should meditate in God's word if we want to know God deeply. Getting to know God deeply. People who will know God deeply are the people who will be able to touch the hearts of people when you speak. You can speak and be dry and be, it will not make any effect with people's life. It will be just waste and sound, sound, sound. But some people can talk and people will listen because they have something to say. And if you want to have a command over people in such manner, then you need to know God deeply so you can go and encourage them. You can talk to them. Knowing God deeply is knowing his theology, is studying God. Theology simply means study about God. And that's what it says, knowing God daily, deeply. It is a good thing. So read God's word, study God's word, listen to the preaching. When, when someone preaches, listen very carefully. When, when, when a servant of God is speaking, listen. Whether he is on the pulpit or whether he is sitting and talking, listen. You will learn. Get to know God daily, deeply. Read some good books. Every day try to read at least one page if you can. Or one chapter of some books. A good reader will always be a good leader. And that's how we get wisdom. Look at verse number 6 and 7. Okay, as we get to know God daily deeply, look at verse number 6 and 7. A virtuous man knoweth not, neither does a fool understand these. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. While you do these things, while you give thanks to God, while you sing praise, while you boast about God, while you use music to worship God, while you triumph for God, and you get to know God deeply, you know what will happen? Your enemies will fail. Amen? Your enemies will fail. Your enemies will fail. When you please God, you know the Bible speaks about when a man's ways pleases God, he will make his enemies to be at peace. God will do two things if your ways pleases God. He will make your enemies to be at peace with you or he, God will make your enemies peace by peace. Two things will happen. God will make your enemies fail. If you, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is give thanks to God, sing his praise, boast about God, listen to godly music, triumph for God, we mean strive, and God, get to know God daily. Your enemies will fail. They'll be destroyed. They'll be destroyed. You don't have to do much. You need to please God. The wicked will fail. A virtuous man knoweth not, neither does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. 
Sometimes we ask this question, why do the unrighteous prosper, isn't it? When you see them prospering, it means they are about to fail. Like, oh, they are unbelievers and look at them. No, they are about to fail. We were driving and today we saw a car in front of us. Earth is heaven. What it says? Earth is? Is it right or wrong? Huh? No. For an unbeliever, it is true. For an unbeliever, this is the only heaven he will enjoy. And then he goes to hell. And for a Christian, this is the only hell we will suffer. And then we go to heaven. If this is heaven, <laughs> you are born to hell. And so he is telling the truth about himself. Earth is heaven. Yes, earth is heaven for all unbelievers. What you, Your answer was right. Your answer that earth is heaven is false. It's true. What you are saying is right. But for an unbeliever, earth is heaven. But for a believer, earth is not heaven. Earth is hell. This world is hell for us. We need out of this world in the presence of God. Amen? Look at verse number 8. But thou, Lord, art most high forever. Thou, Lord, art most high forever. Remember one thing. God will be God always. Amen? No matter what you do, it is not going to diminish God. God will be God always. Evermore. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. Whether you sing praises or not, he will still be God forever. Whether you give thanks or not, he will still be God forever. Whether you boast about him or not, he will still be God forever. So then why should I do all this thing? For my benefit. So I may have favors from God. So I may be grateful to God, that God may be pleased in my life. So that I may have God's blessings upon my life. That my family, my children, my spouse, my business, my job will be blessed by God. That God would be happy with me. Because I'm striving to please Him. No matter what you do is not going to diminish God. He will always be God forevermore. Amen? Amen? Well, brother, you didn't go to church. So what? You are the loser. Isn't it? But God will be God forevermore. You didn't give to God for His work. You didn't pay. You didn't, you didn't offer an offering unto God. So what? It's not going to diminish God. It's not going to make God poor. God will be God forevermore. You didn't tell people about God. You didn't give out gospel track. You didn't witness to anyone this week. So what? God will be God forevermore. It's not going to change him. But it is going to change me. It's going to make me weak. It's going to make me sick. It's going to make me poor. It's going to make me lazy. It's going to make me depressed, angry, greedy. When my life is not in alignment with God's word, my life will be a failure. I have to please God. I have to sing praises. I'm doing this because I recognize my God is a great God forevermore. There's no other God and all I have is this true God and I recognize Him as holy. I'm going to worship. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We should be in His presence daily, thinking about Him, loving Him, serving Him, boasting about Him, triumphing for Him. God will always be God. Everybody say, God will always be God. Amen? 
Look at verse number 10. 9 we checked with verse number 6 and 7, isn't it? The same thing. Look at verse number 10. I love this. I love this. You might want to highlight it. You might want to memorize it. You might want to just underline, uh, hi, underline it. It's a great verse. I love this verse. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of, a, of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. You know what is unicorn? Unicorn is an animal like a horse, but has a horn right pointed up from the head. And its pointer is sharp and standing from like a tower unicorn and God says he's going to exalt you like the horns of an unicorn standing up before the enemy fearless and courageous and without shame and, and with total confidence and courage and boldness when you drown yourself in God he will change your life for God. When you drown yourself in God, He will change your life for God. He will use you for Him. We all want to be used by God, isn't it? How many of you want to be used by men? And we don't like it, right? Well, that guy is using me, man. He's making use of me. He's just playing around. She's just using. We don't like to be used. But we all like to be used by God. Amen? Amen. That's why we pray, God, use me today. Lord, use me. And you know what God does? When we drown ourselves in God, just love Him. A home full of, God, full of God's blessing. Our home is, the atmosphere is about God. Is, the talk is about God. The thought is about God. The music is about God. You know what happens? Our heart, our spirit, our emotions will all be at peace. At peace. And God is going to do what? Anoint us. With what? Fresh oil. What is fresh oil? More of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That is fresh oil. Oil is the picture of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. Everywhere in the Bible when you read, it is a picture of the Holy Spirit. He will fill us with His Holy Spirit. His power will be upon our life. What a Psalm 92. God will exalt you and anoint you. God will exalt you and anoint you. Let's, let's say it all together. It's a, good, uh, it's a good thing. Okay, let's do it again. It is a good thing. To give thanks, give thanks and sing praise. And sing praise. Secondly, it is, it is a good thing to boast about God. It is a good thing to play godly music. It is a good thing to triumph for God. It is a good thing to get to know God daily and deeply. It is a good thing to see the wicked fail. It is a good thing to know that God will always be God. 
It is a good thing to know that God will exalt you and anoint you. Look at verse number 11. My eye also shall see my desire on my enemies. And my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up. Amen. In the New Testament, we are supposed to do what? Bless those who? Curse. And do what? Huh? Pray for them. Good. Listen, right? How many of you want to bless those who curse you? Come, let me see how many spiritual people. I'm trapping you, okay? How many of you? Some people are like, I... Okay? How many wants to bless those who curse you? One, two, three. One, two, three. What about the others? <laughs> how many want to see... So how, many, how many of you want to pray for your enemies? Pray for what? That they may change? Good, you all pray. I want to see my enemies fail before me. <laughs> okay, it's good. Right? When God gave in the Sermon on the Mount, he, he, was giving the, he was making the Sermon on the Mount so high, making sure that nobody can reach there. If someone slaps you, you're... What Jesus said, show thee. Is it possible? Yes. Really? We'll try. <laughs> huh? Yes, some people do, isn't it? And it's a good thing. Some people can take that cross. But some can't. Some cannot. And David says, my eyes also shall see my desire on my enemies. You know, when, I, when people hurt me, when my enemies come against and hurt the work of God, and I pray, and I see them falling like a card, I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is God is taking care of his children. Hmm? And it's not wrong to pray, it's right to pray. It's just that I don't pray <laughs> for my enemies. My eye also shall see my desire on my enemies. And my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Your enemies will be brought low. Now see how the, the sequence of God's word is. Only if you do all these things, this is going to happen. This is not going to happen first. There's a sequence. First, you worship God. You sing His praise. Give thanks to Him. You boast about Him. You triumph for Him. You play godly music. You get to know God daily, deeply. When all you do these, then what happens? Immediately, your wicked start falling down. 6 and 7 and 11. Wicked fall. Verse number 9. Wicked fall. When you do those things, verse number 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six, seven, nine, and eleven. Boom! Your wicked people fall and fail before you. But it will not happen if you don't do that first verse number one, two, three, four, five. If you don't please God, if you don't know God deeply, then these things will not be an effect in our life. That's the beauty of God's word. God says, you don't have to do anything. You just serve me. You just love me. You just worship me. You just boast about me. You just keep serving me. You just try him and get to know me daily deeply. And I will make your enemies to fall. Amazing, isn't it? Look at verse number 12. Verse number 12. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. You know, these are some of these, they grow in deserts where there is no proper water also. And yet they are green. Because it's my life. Yeah, I'm going to make your life like that. 
no matter what you're surrounding, you will still be green and fruitful and you will still be bearing fruits and you'll still be fresh in life. Lebanon was a very rich place. Hmm? The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. It shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. God says, I will make you prosper. If you do this, I'll make your enemies to collapse and I will prosper you. God says, hey, why do you want to learn Why do you want to learn to eat in this way when you can actually eat like this? Right? Which is easier? Joshua, can you try? Try to feed yourself. Your hands are too long, right? <laughs> it's easier to eat this way, isn't it? And God says, hey, this is the way to eat. Look, simple. And then we try to help God by this way. We try to do extra unnecessary thing. We are trying to do the worldly way. We are trying to raise up our children through worldly ways. We are trying to do our work worldly ways. We are trying to uh, do all the things about our life worldly ways. And we wonder, why? When I say worldly way, I'm not talking about sinful way. I'm just talking about the wisdoms of the world. I'm not talking about sinful things. I'm talking about the wisdoms of the world. And God says, hey, Forget about it. You do it my way and so easy it will be for you. And sometimes it is hard to believe and things are easy, isn't it? Huh? That's the problem. It's hard to believe when things are easy. God says, I will prosper you. Look at verse 13, 14 and 15 and we finish it here. 13, 14, and 15. Those that be planted. Look at that verse. Uh, uh, this is very true. You might want to highlight and put, it, put this scripture in your house. Okay? Those that be planted. You know what is planted means? Becoming members. Dwelling. Active in God's house. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord, what will happen to them? Shall flourish in the courts of our God. Amen? Very important to be in the house of God. Very important to worship God. Very important to be faithful. Very important to serve. To be actively participating to become a participator, planted, being fixed in God's house, dwelling over there. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord. What is the house of the Lord? The church. The church is God's house. You know what planted means? Nothing else can move you. Planted. If you plant a coconut tree, go and shake it with your hand. Will that fall? No, it's planted. They're building bridges and putting pillars. They're planting the pillars. You cannot shake it with your hand and collapse them. And God says, you got to be planted unmovable. No matter what. I'm going to, I'm fixed with God. I'm planted with God. And when I do that, and I'm planted, look at this. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. You are planted in God's house, you go out into God's world and you will flourish. You will flourish. Stay in God's word. They shall still bring forth fruit in what? Old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. The world is telling you be thin, be thin, isn't it? 
because they want to sell their products. You take this product and you'll be thin. You do this, you'll be thin and they want to sell their product. They're all about today selling medicines to become thin. And God says, if you're happy, you'll be healthy. You'll be rich. You'll be fat. Yes, Carlton? No, he's not fat. <laughs> right? Ezekiel? Are you fat? Yes. Good. <laughs> they shall still bring forth fruit in what? Old age. Being fat is a blessing. The world will look at it. Ah, oh, no, no, no. You got to be zero size. Like a hockey stick. Right? That's word. I says, no man. Be healthy. They shall br still bring forth fruit in old age and they shall be fat and flourishing. Biblically, fat means prosperous. Okay? Fat means prosperous. They're healthy physically. Uh, they are financially, they are healthy. Spiritually, they are healthy. Mentally, they are healthy. To show that the Lord is upright, He is my, to show that the Lord is upright, He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in Him. Stay in God's word. If you stay in God's word, you will flourish, you will bring forth fruit in old age and you will be flourishing. You will be prosperous. This is God's ways to make your life better. This is God's formula. And it is a good thing. Amen? Amen? Simple truths for daily living. It is a good thing. Right? Let's pray. <laughs> Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. You know, it is very difficult to have great faith for simple things. You know, when we have too much big problems, we have faith. And then we pray hard, isn't it? But for small things, we lack faith. We say, ah, oh, it's a small thing, why should I pray? And today God gave us the small things. And I think we should say, God, please help me to have faith in your word and do it according to your word. I need your help. Let's all close our eyes and bow our heads. And maybe if you want to come and pray and humble yourself, please find yourself at the altar. You say, Lord, I need faith. Increase my faith. Help me to believe in your word, O God. Help me to believe. Sometimes the simple things, I find it hard to believe, to have faith. Uh, oh God, because I try to reason with my brain and my mind, I need to, I want to believe, O oh God, the simple things and help me to uh, just apply these truths in my mind, in my life, so I can, O oh God, uh, I can triumph for you and I can be flourishing and I can be fat and fruitful. O oh God, I want to have faith. Please help me today. Come and pray. Spend some time in prayer. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask God to increase your faith in this, to believe in these truths.
All right, Carlton, you pray and close uh, the service in prayer.